Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to cover a kind of simple device that has a very, very important function. We're going to go over oxygen blenders. So let's take a look. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Here you can see we have a variety of something that they call an oxygen blender. And what it does is it has a compressed med gas, which is atmospheric air, 21% approximate oxygen, and full oxygen, 100% compressed, that comes into it and through a series of mixing valves and different apparatus inside it, it outputs whatever percentage you have it set as. You can see right here, 0.21 atmospheric, so that would be straight med gas, and FiO2 goes all the way up to 1.0, which is straight oxygen. And that's pretty much how the scale is on every single one of these. There's a slight variety in them. You can tell some of these units are really old too, and that's because you have the option of sending these out to third parties and getting them rebuilt every two years I think it is maybe three years and then they ship them back and uh, we put them back in service so it's a giant block of aluminum for the most part but there's a whole series of different valves and seals that are inside it it has to be done correctly so but let's go over what these things really have on them so you have your gas imports and you have your gas output ports and it's the same on pretty much all of these some of them will have moisture separator traps. You see here, and you see around this one here, this one here. Some of them don't. It's recommended that they do have them because med air, although it's generally a clean and dry air by the standard, you know, still moisture condensation can build up uh, humidity. There's a whole variety of things that can happen in compressed air. It just naturally wants to collect moisture. So we recommend that all of them have that on them. You'll notice that some of them will have flow gauges attached to them and some of them do not. It depends on the clinician and it depends on the usage. Now oxygen blenders, we use them in a variety of locations. You'll see them in operating rooms, especially uh, neonate and uh, delivery and oxygen blenders one of the main uses especially for pediatrics is because young children and babies it's possible for them to go blind supposedly if they receive 100 percent oxygen so when you have a neonate that's hooked up to an oxygen source you have to blend it down to a less than 100 percent pure o2 and that's where we find a variety of these is going to be over in your NICU and over in labor and delivery areas like that. That's where we normally find these. We also have these type of blenders on perfusion carts because you're dealing with the perfusion of the blood and the amount of oxygen that's in the blood. And this is a quick and easy way for them to fine tune the blood oxygen content for the patient that's, you know, currently unconscious in the OR. You can see that I've got flow gauges on them. And when we do a PM on these guys, every couple years they get rebuilt. You can see that there is a service due sticker around right the top. Shout out to Phoebe Medical. They're one of the companies that we use. But when these things are not in their service year, we still have to do a uh, percentage PM, which is going to be done with an analyzer like this guy here. So we have the outputs of the blender go to the inputs or the through port of your uh, flow analyzer and it will monitor the oxygen percentage. So we pay attention to the oxygen percentage on the screen and here on the dial, take a look, you'll notice that there's a little set screw in there. So what we will do is we will set it for let's say 50% is a pretty good average because it's in the middle of the scale 
and then you want this guy here to show 50. So if it's showing low, you take the knob off, you rotate it just a little bit to the right clockwise, and then you push the dial back on. And if it reads 50 stable for a small period of time, then you're going to tighten down that set screw and that locks in your dial to your 50%. And then we check the, the range. So you're gonna put it down to your 21% atmospheric, and then you're gonna range it all the way up to pure 1.0 and make sure that it's reading 98, 99, 100% over here on this gauge. And that's pretty much how it's gonna be with every single one of these. There's gonna be adjustment at the knob, which is going to control the different, um, hell, to be honest, I don't even know uh, what type of seals it are that create the mixture blend. But you can tell that they're, you know, it's the general trend that they're the same, but some of them are obviously a wee bit more complex and a little bit heavier than some of the other ones. I mean, some of these are tiny, but they do the same function as the big one. So, but the important thing for you guys to know is every couple years, these things are sent out to be serviced where they rebuild it completely. You can do it in-house, but to be honest, for the cost of the parts, I recommend uh, companies like Foby or iMed that you can ship it out to them and they will rebuild it and they'll ship it back to you in a box. And it's just a simple and easy process. Saves you a lot of man hours because when you take this apart, there is a very, very specific order and orientation of some of the seals. So you have to do them all correctly. And you can tell, I got all these are different. Every single one of these are different. So you would have to memorize how each and every one of these are. You might only see two of these, but you'll have you know 20 or 30 of these and maybe five or six of these. If you can imagine how complex that would be to have all those parts, just ship them out and have somebody else rebuild your blenders. Way easier, save yourself the man hours. And it's only a few hundred bucks to be honest. So that, guys, that is oxygen blenders in a nutshell. They're not that complex of a device, but they're complex enough, and they have a variety of parts inside them that it's just not technically worth it to do the, the heavy-duty overhaul in-house. As far as the other tests that we might do, you're going to check your flow meters, of course, and uh, run it through its scale. Make sure that this guy here doesn't have any growth in it. And if so, then change out your cylinder, clean it out, and uh, check your oxygen percentages. And then we do that in the off year, and the opposite year, we would ship them out, get them done. So anyway, guys, that is a brief and very fast overview on oxygen blenders. I'm sorry, I would love to do a more thorough overview for you guys, but... This is one of those things where you got to follow the manual and you have to do it correctly. I'm not going to show you how to do PMs on this channel because the liability of that alone is just not worth it to me. Get a manual and learn how to do it for each and every different model. They're very specific, but the general function is about the same. So they're really not that complex, but they are very heavy duty and they last seemingly forever. So that, guys, is oxygen blenders. Thanks for watching.